The next scenario that I'd like to cover is reporting for discrete events using a historical data source. So picture something like a batch-based process where a batch runs and every time the batch completes we add a row into a report that represents some summary calculations taken for the duration of that batch. So say batch 1 runs from 12.30 to 1.15. Uh, at 1.15 when the batch ends we use a live trigger in the PLC to capture some historian summaries taking place from 12.30 to 1.15 and add those summaries as a row value into the report. Each time a batch executes, we append a new row into the report and we collect uh, each of those event summaries by day so that when the next day starts and we start executing more batches, uh, those event summaries go onto a new sheet for that day. So let's go into the template library. And this time I'll select under applications, uh, batch summary template. This one requires a historian connector and a real-time connector to trigger the uh, update of the report and to define the start and end times of each event as it's occurring. And we can pick up to four different uh, tags that we want to get the min, max, and average summaries on for each batch. So I'll stick with the mixer tags for this one. And then I'll go into the schedule designer here and we can define uh, the events in the PLC that will determine the time frame of the report. Now, for this one, uh, four different schedule actions are required uh, to generate this report. We need to keep track of the ID of the batch or the cycle that each row represents. We need to keep track of the start uh, time of these batches or events, the end time of each. And then once we have all that uh, requisite uh, information, then also at the end of the batch, the report can be updated. So. In order to complete this schedule, we have to fill in the start event and report name parameters. So I'll go in, I'll select uh, the event condition under my PLC connector for the tag. Let's do, for example, cycle start using the XLR DA simulator here. I'll copy that tag name out because we'll use it for the other three actions. And then we'll assign when the cycle start uh, transitions to a value of one, we'll assign this XL reporter RG00 variable the value of the cycle ID tag. So once again, just to reiterate, when the cycle start uh, tag transitions from a value of zero to one, we'll capture the value of the cycle ID tag in the PLC and stick it in this uh, internalized Excel reporter variable. Now also when the event starts, we will uh, sort of set the start time on this date and time Excel reporter variable. Think of this sort of like a stopwatch that lets you see the start uh, and the end and the duration of an event. Here we're getting the start time. Now on the end of the batch, when cycle start uh, equals zero, we'll stop the stopwatch and capture the end time. And then finally, once we have all that information, We'll update the report and add a row based on this discrete uh, event and time frame. Save. So now, uh, normally, this scheduler would start and the PLC would now be driving this. Uh, but just for the purpose of demonstration, I'm going to do it manually. So we'll say we had a cycle start at 12.57 uh, a.m. And then we had it end at, say, 4.57. And now if I go into the report viewer, we can see in the daily batch summary, we've got a 2020 August report. We've got an August 20th sheet. In that sheet, we have a uh, event log for the P1214X batch and it has uh, this time frame and then these uh, summary values that are calculated pertain to this discrete time frame. Now if we go back uh, into the Project Explorer here, we go into System Check and I can assign a new value to Cycle ID. Right now it is the P1214X batch. 
I change that, say, to B1215Y, and go back into the designer, I can now say, okay, this batch started at 958. And it ended at 11.58. And these time frames are totally arbitrary, obviously. They'd be being driven by events in the process. And I go back into the report viewer again. I can see that that's been updated with the new data recalculated for each event. Or recalculated for this event, rather. And so that is essentially the gist of... Uh, reporting uh, for discrete time periods automatically using a historian. Um, there are tons of different um, combinations of layouts you could do for a report like this. The one that I did uh, creates uh, a row in the report for each event that's occurring. But for example, if you wanted to create an entire discrete report for that event and take periodic samples throughout the event, uh, there's a batch history template that allows you to do that. If you want to create discrete reports for a process that has multiple phases, there are a lot of different operations. There are a lot of different uh, layouts you can use for that. So the, the possibilities are really endless with what you can do here uh, using a combination of uh, the powerful drivers we have against historical data uh, with the report as you run technology with PLC triggers.